One Man's Family, as originally conceived and presented for 22 years by Carlton E. Morse. Chapter 2, Book 2, will follow immediately after this public service message. You're looking at the citizens of tomorrow, the men and women who will build tomorrow's cars and television sets, the congressmen of tomorrow, the mothers and business women, the farmers, merchants, teachers. And remember, tomorrow's citizens are made in today's schools. How about the schools in our town? Can they turn out happier, more productive citizens for a stronger America? Are our schools being expanded to meet larger and larger enrollments? Does the teaching program meet the needs of all of our students? Are teaching conditions good enough to hold our fine teachers? You can help erase the question mark. Join community groups working to improve our schools and write to Better Schools, 2 West 45th Street, New York 19, New York, for the informative free booklet, How the Citizens Can Help Their Schools. Remember, better schools build a stronger America. This afternoon, along about 3.30, we find this state of affairs at 264 Seacliff Drive, where the Barber clan abides. 153, 154, 155. Well, anybody for Africa? Six. Dr. Livingston, Seven. no doubt. <laughs> Jack, counting his well-earned or ill-gotten gains, six. as the case may be, mm -hmm. and hoarding them with all Two. the instincts of an embryo Three. miser. Jack! 64, yeah, Mom? Jack, I'm changing. If the doorbell rings, you exit, please. Okay, 167, 168, 169, 170, 171. Jack, 172. Is that the okay, I'm getting it. So I never even get the chance to make a deposit. 173. Well, young man. Oh, hello, Doctor Thompson. Morning, Doctor. Who's sick? Huh? Well, you see a fireman, I suppose you think of a fire. Sure. See a policeman, you think of jails. See a soldier, you think of wars. Well, I do. I guess I lost that argument. <laughs> Why the British sun helmet? Oh, I got it for Hazel. Sun's hot in the islands. Do tell. Uh, where's your mother? She's upstairs changing. I'll call her. No rush. Let her finish. What's this? I'm depositing my week's take. Week's take? Yeah. Excuse me if I get it all in before Cliff or somebody comes along with the borrow some. Mm -hmm. I guess I better put that in hand where somebody won't tread on it. Well, sure. 75, 76. <laughs> a real Henry Barber. Eight. <laughs> Cross nine, between a squirrel and a busy bee. Eight, uh, gathering nuts nine, and honey for the winter, huh? Yeah, it says a penny saves is a penny earned. He would. Also save your pennies and you'll save your dollars, huh? Don't you like my father? Oh, I do, I do indeed. Remarkable man. All the fine old American mm -hmm. copybook virtues rolled into one mm -hmm. package. I'm sure glad Mom married Dad. Well, you should be. It's just that we of the commoner clay sometimes find his superior virtues a little bit irritating. Your sister's home? 84, 185. Mm, not bad. Yeah, excellent, in fact. I hope you burned it. Look at the calluses. Uh-huh. Yes, I, I'd say a dollar eighty-five cents worth of calluses to the penny. <laughs> Nobody here but you and your mother, huh? Well, Hazel's downtown shopping for a vacation. I don't know where Claudia is. Okay, if I come in? Oh, hi, Betty. Come on. Hello, Dr. Thompson. Good afternoon, Betty. Could I hold him for a minute? Well, okay, but sit down so you don't drop him. He's quite a lot heavier. Yeah, you seem to have a proprietary interest in that pig. Well, not right now. But when Jack and I get married, half of it'll be mine. Well, I thought it will. Did I hear married? You know, I think girls are crazy or something. Always talking about uh, getting married or something. Well, people do. And give girls half their money? Yes, sir. It's the law. Isn't it, Dr. Thompson? Mm-hmm. Community property. 
think all the laws were made by women. You think they're not? Oh, here, give me my money. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, Fred uh, Thompson. Good afternoon, Fanny. Jack, why didn't you call me? Well, I was going to, but Dr. Thompson said not to. <laughs> I just dropped in for a little call, no hurry. Well, at least we don't have to stand out here in the hall. Jack, go and ask Mrs. Kettleman to put on some water for tea. Oh, okay. Come on, Betty. Well, for goodness sake, what brings you over here to the barbers in the middle of a busy afternoon? Uh, an emergency stork call. <laughs> uh, but it turned out to be a false alarm. Fanny, I'll never understand why husbands get so jumpy. It's only nature taking its preordained course. Oh, no. I don't suppose a bachelor would understand that. <laughs> Is that what you came over to tell me? So you've decided to send Hazel on a wild goose chase. Oh, you don't approve. Pacific cruise, Hawaiian moonlight, hordes of lonely women <laughs> looking for adventure, hordes of unprincipled men looking for lonely women. <laughs> no, sir, I do not approve. Excuse me. Hello, Barbara residence. Just a moment. May, well, who knew I was here? Mm. Well? Oh, no, not again. But I just... Well, all right. I'll go right over. <coughs> Women. Now what? Now she's decided to have that baby. Oh. <laughs> uh, a minute ago or a half an hour ago, it was a false alarm. Now it's hurry, doctor, hurry. I think women like to have babies on the back seats of taxi cabs. Did you ever stop to consider that women are also victims of circumstance? I didn't even get a chance to say what I came here to say. Oh, what was that? Claudia. Well, what about Claudia? What's the matter with that girl, anyway? Why, well, I... I don't know, Fred. What is? Oh. Hazel, for goodness sake! Hello, oh, Mother! What are you doing? Hello, Dr. Thompson. Oh, the girl's been on a foraging expedition. I certainly have. Excuse me, my arms are breaking. Well, I can't stop now. I've got other fish to fry. Yes, but Claudia. Oh, ask her. It's not my problem. Oh, oh God. Hey, people, come and look. Well, Dr. Thompson had to leave there. What in the world? These are just the articles I could carry. Wait until the other things arrive. Why, child, goodness, you're not taking a trip around the world. I'm free. I'm liberated. I'm the new woman. Oh, golly, Mother, I'm worn to a fright. What you need is a cup of tea. Think tea would help? No, you wait and see. I asked Mrs. Kellman to boil the water. I'll go and see about it right away. Oh, my poor feet. Hey, what's going on in here? Oh, Jack, would you please run upstairs and bring me my slippers? Hello, Betty. Hello. What for? Well, what kind of a silly question is that? Please. No, oh, okay. Come on, Betty. No, I'll wait here. I guess you've been shopping, haven't you? <laughs> I guess I have. What's in that one? Let's see. I think that's my pajamas and beach robe. No, this is the legacy. Oh, are you going to get married? What? It's so beautiful. A bride could wear that. Bride? Yes, she could, couldn't she? Don't you like it? Okay, here's your slippers. Well, I thought you two had gone out in the yard. We were, but we came in. Oh, I see. Well, if you're going to eat something, may we have some bread and butter with peanut butter and jam on it? Well, certainly go out and see Mrs. Kettleman and ask her. Oh, swell. Come on, Betty. Okay. Sure, who wants to see women's clothes? Oh. <laughs> now, you drink your tea, and then I want to see everything. What's this? Oh, Hazel, it's beautiful. Yes, beautiful enough for a bride. Oh, Hazel, my dear. I'm just repeating what Betty said. They certainly start early thinking about men, don't they? You can't have beautiful clothes for yourself. No, there has to be a man around to admire them. Well, my dear, the world is full of men. And marriages are made in heaven. But this doesn't happen to be heaven. This isn't heaven, but who can say? Maybe Hawaii is. How 
howdy, folks. Repeat after me. I will be careful. I will always be careful burning trash. I will burn brush only when it's safe to burn. And I know I can keep it under complete control. I will cooperate with the local forest fire warden and the fire department, and I will observe all fire laws and regulations. Please be careful. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. <laughs> Even yet, the mood of despair is on Hazel, but not for long. Beautiful clothes, not a man on the horizon. Well, my dear, I expect the Lurleen will be overrun with men. And I'm sure the Royal Hawaiian Hotel in Waikiki Beach will have plenty of them. And, oh, by the way, don't the officers and men of the Navy still inhabit Pearl Harbor? <laughs> Mother, you wonderful. <laughs> now, what else have you got to show me? Yes, I almost forgot. Oh, goodness, we'll have this room in a mess if I open all these things down here. Oh, nonsense. That's what we have a broom and dustpan for. I wonder where Claudia is. She'd enjoy this as much as anyone. I don't think so. Well, of course she would. Why wouldn't she? Did you see the look on her face when she heard I was going to the islands? Oh, now, Hazel, you're not saying that Claudia is jealous of your good fortune. No, I wouldn't say she was jealous. But I would say she looked as though the earth had dropped out from under her feet, leaving her hanging in midair. Well, that's a queer thing to say. A lot of queer things are happening to Claudia now that she's married to Johnny. And Mother, watch out. I've seen that look on Claudia's face before. Something's going to explode. Maybe Claudia, maybe your new son-in-law, Johnny, but something for sure. Emerson Tracy plays Dr. Thompson, and Susan Oden is Betty Carter. One Man's Family comes to you at this same hour, every weekday, Monday through Friday, created and written by Carlton E. Morse.